Hello and welcome to Tykes TV. Dan, uh, match uh, reaction against Lincoln City. Always great to have you on, Dan. It's uh, been a while, but I know there's work and everything might have been floating no about and back. Uh, we're going to get on the back battle clap a bit later on with some of his comments. But, I mean, when when I, when I saw it starting 11, uh, Dan, you know, with new, new goalkeeper going to be coming in, Kyron, uh, oh. Gabriel. But I half expected, for some reason, uh, Kyron Lockdown to start at left back. Great to see Pines back. But well, I thought he might have just played like Earl, Pines, you know, and Roberts at back, but he didn't. It yeah. moved real lot. But rest at side, we kind of knew what it was going to be, you know, Cosgrove, what was up front. We hadn't got really much else on bench, to be fair, if you're not being honest. Uh, midfield, kind of same old, same old. So, again, on paper, start 11 looked pretty decent, pretty strong, Dan. Yep. Agree. Uh, when we came into the game, I thought, well, that looks like what we for what we can give. That looks mm. probably the best squad we can pull out. Uh, best out eleven. Sorry. Mm. Um, again, I know that there's there's problems. We we need to get in a strike. We're, we're looking for a striker at the moment. So obviously, with with Jallo out injured, you know, Watters and Cosgrove is his, is his best best front two. Mm. Be what that be, you know. You you can be the judge of the judge of that. But I were happy with midfield. That midfield looked pretty good. I were I were quite eager to see Ariel would look at that left wing going more out to the left wing back. Yeah. Um, which to be honest, I were quite impressed with him. I liked the way that he he got forward. I think were it him who put a put ball across to Cosgrove? Were it? Or, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's your favourite, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I liked I liked that um, I liked that goal not because it finished but the way he put it the way he put it across that first time that early cross trying to ask questions at defence and try and um, you know and, and trying to ask questions at centre backs um, and I, I liked that bit but yeah the squad starting eleven there were no complaints um, about it personally I do want to see Lofthouse start mm. more often I think he's from what I've seen of him, I can see that he's a re he's quite a, he's a talented player, um, but only he has got time to be introduced, or you know, should I say, Daryl's got time to introduce him. Still a long yeah. way to go yet, but uh, but yeah, that squad I have no complaints. I mean, a, a lot of questions have been asked, like you just mentioned via the past that you know gained some strikers in and but I made a debate on uh, on Friday Night Live about. It's been mentioned he's wanting two, maybe three strikers, which is fine. I totally get that. But again, you're wanting to fetch in players to, you know, I think it'd be a bit unfair to fetch in two strikers and start them straight away. Probably need one to play alongside Cosgrove and give him a bit of time for confidence. And now Cosgrove scored his goal, which was a decent goal, to be fair. I'd have controlled it, yeah, you know, killed really it around was. it. You know, right finish that light, to be fair. Uh, Mark Roberts, again, we, know, we all know what Prince can bring, you know, with his physicality. Great to yeah. see him on the score sheet as well. So again, uh, two and out up. I think when you look at stats, I think it was two shots on target. We scored two from it, so pretty decent conversion rate. But I think the thing what we're lacking from me and 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 Daryl Clark said this, but in a more uh, coach side in it. But as I'm watching through the game, is that at times I'm thinking we could cross it in a bit earlier or a bit sooner, a bit quicker. And that and Daryl Clark touched on that said that the at times decision making should have been a bit sharper on turn and, mm. and that. And it won't it won't to worry, but I'm thinking at times it could have because we all know what Lincoln's like, uh decent, decent uh stadium, decent setup, you know, we, we drove here to a piece last season and we've got Amish five one at all. So we know what you know what they can bring to a uh, game. But I, I for for me. It were always a threat when Lincoln were coming forward, Dan, because you just knew nine again for that bit of a weakness at back. And uh, Gabriel, new goalkeeper, pulled off a couple of decent saves to be fair to keep us in game at one point. Yeah, I, I, I mean, let's start. I mean, we'll we'll start with positives. I thought uh, Mark Roberts to be one man at match, absolutely brilliant performance. Not just not just for getting his goal, but in in that back three as well. I thought it was fantastic. The defending aspect to it, I, I mean, the, the defending I wasn't... The way that they ran through midfield was a concern. 
But I mm. think is in that back three that De Givney De Givney cocked up when he tried to pass it back to the goalkeeper and nearly yeah, went in. Yeah. yeah, that was that was just stupid. It was a moment of madness. Mm. Um, apart from that, I were happy with the way back three played. So defensively, and I mean, I know that Lincoln Lincoln the the goal they scored were very good. Mm. It came it good first touch and he volleyed his back at there. Yeah. It was a lovely, lovely goal. So when you when you have an opposition who scores goals like that, you can you can kind of get you, you kind of get it. There's no sort of defending it. If it could have maybe got tighter, but you know, it's ifs, ifs and buts. I think so. That's the kind of positive. Apart from that, the Lincoln's most most of their shots. They had that shot that were, were a good save by um, new goalkeeper. What's his name again? Gabriel. 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 We'll call him Gabby. Yeah, we'll Gabby. Call him Gabby. Yeah. Um, good save by Gabby, you know. Um, but apart from that, most of their shots were off target, mm. which shows to me that we're trying to neutralize that threat from that battle from those back three, and it were a day decent performance. That that being said, I mean, we're going on about the two the two forward players, you know, Cosgrove got a really good got a really good goal, like we've already said. He were a little bit absent. For rest of the game, he started getting frustrated, end up getting picking up a yellow card. He needs mm. to get that out of his game because he's going to end up wrapping his studs around somebody's foot and getting sent off one, one mm. of these games. Watters, um, I were happy with, I were happy with his performance in Cup on mm. Tuesday. Um, not so much his finishing, but the way he were running and getting themselves into good positions and really trying their back line and getting and, and jumping on balls that were coming through. Yesterday weren't that happy. He, he, he just seemed like his first touch were a bit off. Yeah. He was delaying his runs. He was missing he, his timing weren't very good. But I think overall, most disappointing. Most disappointing. Apart from Luca, who was sweeping up and played had a good game. Phillips were a bit absent. Craig were a little yeah. bit absent. It, it was just too. And then when we did manage to get forward, I heard Phillips were miss. You know he. he they were they either played pass too late or they end up misplacing pass and then that end up causing problems and, and then I, so that invited them to jump back onto the counter and yeah. it it weren't a perfect performance. The only perfect bit about it was the result because we're coming into it, I would have taken a draw. Um, yeah, a few people have said that a draw. You know, out. and it's a difficult because it is a difficult place to go. They're a good team and there's no dispute in it. Uh, so yeah, I mean, as much as as much as I'm really pleased with the result, ecstatic about the result, actually, I do get some of Daryl Clark's comments. Uh, he's not; he knows that the performance could have been better. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, it's like what you just mentioned, Vera and Phillips, and I mentioned it against Mansfield Town as well. Well, uh, when it was Friday night game at Hartwell, and it was like a frustrating play because we know what player that Phillips could be, it, it, and I always like calling like a ghost. I don't mean it disrespectful, but mm. he'll just pop up from nowhere and he'll come out with a worldy shot, or it, you know, it, it goes on attack. But for some reason, Adam Phillips, and I'm hoping it's not like last season and back with a different scenario after the when he got back card at Wembley. He, he was a bit slow and he, had, he, he, he did come out and said that, you know, it affected him and he had to get... But for some reason, he started and it, it still seems to be like a bit of a slow starter. As mm. in, it's not the player that we know. For whatever reason, I don't know. Uh, like you just said, Via, it was a bit a bit lethargic, a bit like misplaced passes or the wrong ball or not looking and passing at times, I'm thinking... Mm, a bit, a bit of a concern, a bit of a worry. Like what you said, Via. Once, once we lose it, Via, his midfield, like I said, but I think John Russell when he came on, he tried to make that bit of an anchor at back yeah. and tried to show it up, and you could tell what what Daryl Clark were trying to do because you could see where it was going. Like you just said, Via, said to be coming straight through us, and it was like his back free and Gabby at back, you know, in, in net. So again, Daryl Clark, yeah, he'll. We'll get on about him in a minute, but before we do, I'm going to have to come to this. For me, Lincoln should have had a penalty. That were that were a nail on penalty. Yeah, you know, I mean, I've watched it a few times, and wow, he just took him out. 
Yeah, I reckon see that poor, and again, poor officiating for me. That like, yeah, been screaming out for it to be a bit noise, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I was watching on a, I was watch, watching game through Lincoln commentary, so the commentary with Lincoln's, and they were absolutely incensed that that weren't mm. a penalty. And and to be honest, I agree with him. I didn't agree with much else they said, but I agree with that bit. Um, yeah. There were, uh, but uh, but uh, yeah, it, it were. It, 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 you know, what it reminded me of strangely. It reminded me of that uh, when we had a uh, when we had penalty against Dutch in um, in Euros. Mm. It was same mm. sort of principle, weren't it? Mm. Kane's Kane's gone football. He's got yeah. shot off, but yeah. defenders followed through and well, he's yeah. clattered him. Yeah. It's the same principle, and I know that he's managed to get cross uh, uh, the. Uh, He's managed to cross the ball as Lincoln player, but the reality is he made contact with him, which so which would have made it a penalty. Yeah. So and you know anywhere else on pitch that would have been a foul. So we've probably got mm. off a little bit lucky on that. Um, yeah. Good out to Jill. Kind of, the, yeah. the, the, the thing is though, Neil, they tend to even the sends out them sort of things. You we know, do. Yeah. You know, we'll Some not people be saying like, oh well, we, we do one after all miss things. What we yeah, said, probably but, uh, yeah, we get probably. that, but. As, as a fan, you know, if I were a Lincoln City fan and you saw that, you'd, you know, if it were like other way around, you'd be incensed just the same. Oh, like, yeah, I'm yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, you know, that, I think that's a, a, what all fans can relate to. The match with Barnsley, Lincoln, you know, Birmingham, Blackpool, whatever, wherever fan you're at, you see someone like that, it's like, come on, referee. It's, yeah, it's yeah. not close. It's like, I'm, you know, uh, it's, you know, on about with it's uh, going straight through a bloke and doing that. Horrendous, horrendous. Uh, Injury to not for his player as well. Um, not nice. And again, yeah, you see things like that, it put, kind of puts in perspective. I know that we're like more of coming together, but it just goes to show what could happen. Um, and again, you just you just want football players, yeah. You, you, we always like more and say, Oh, I want to foul this over and it took him out. But when you see that with Brock and Shattered Legs, it's it's not great, like football, yeah. No, it's, so, the, the, no. the, the thing is, what we realize, what we know about football, and people say, Oh, it's not a physical game anymore. It is a physical game. Yeah. The only the only difference is, is that they are, you know, back in bloody 70s when they weren't as I'm not saying they weren't fit, but they weren't as fit as they are now. Yeah. You know, they go, they're going to tackle with such pace now that, mm -hmm. and you know. The the you know the big the big lads you know what I mean. There's no really small players anymore. Well, yeah. apart from you know you like players like Luke O'Connell, but like they are big, like quite muscular lads. So getting hit by getting hit by one of them in a tackle can yeah, cause some serious like damage if it goes into wrong places. If it goes in wrong places and you like midway your ankle and stuff and and your leg and that, and it's uh, it is sad to see. Um, it's uh, we just gotta wish him all the best and hope for a hope for a speedy, speedy. recovery, but it don't but it don't look good. No, it don't mate. Uh, yeah, so going back to the game, Daryl Clark's comments. I, I heard it a few times, like I'm just saying off air, uh, on Radio Sheffield and very unhappy, very blunt, very very straightforward talking, and I think that's refreshing. So it, it surprised me so much stuff he said, if I'm being honest. I'm like, oh, I want to say that, but Fair play, he did say, you know, and people aren't, aren't heard it. If you go on BBC Sounds, you can listen to his segment there. But basically, unhappy about performance, could have been a lot better, could have been a lot sharper, some decisions making, squeaky bum time at times, game management and stuff. And I'm thinking that as a fan is refreshing, but he's not like hiding from all, you know, he's in his own mind that they can play better. Uh, you know, obviously he got asked about transfer situation, but I mean, just going back, Dan, hearing a, a gaffer like that compared to last season, rather make up an excuse and saying we're unlucky. Uh, I think last one again last season was not three no down. He said we weren't out in it much until third goal went in. I'm like, you don't you don't need someone to like try and pull one of your eyes, but for someone like Daryl Clark to come out and call it as it is, I think that's when fans will say, yeah, do you know what? Isn't same same mindset as us kind of thing. Yeah, completely. I think, I, I mean, I haven't listened to the interview, but just for context for your viewers, you mm. only just told me about this interview before I could, before we came, came on <laughs> here, so I haven't listened to it. Um, I think you can look at it one or two ways, really. You can look at it when Collins were coming out and saying, or, and, and defending, and defending bad performances. 
they they were there were a sense where I thought, well, you need to you need to defend your players and you can't hang them out to dry. Mm. Everybody's got to take their own responsibility in it, etc. So that's where I kind of saw it back then. But then as more it went on, it's like, well, you're not it, you're not communicating the standards of which you're of which you're gonna put your team up to. Daryl's obviously got a different approach, and I don't disagree. And end of the day, it's his approach, and I think he has got to say he has got to say what he thinks. And you've got to. I think you can't be of it. I think the one thing that Daryl has done well, and the bits that I congratulate him about when he's come out and said this, is that you, he's not saying this in the wake of defeat. He's saying this no. in wake of a win which were a really, really good result. Mm. But I, I admire him for coming out and setting his standards and saying, this is not the way I want to play. We made mistakes and I want to carry on pushing these lads and pushing yeah. them and pushing them until the, until the, the best they can possibly be. So you, you've got to, you've got to admire him in, 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 in respect, you know, as long as he don't go too, too hard on, you know, on, on individual players. I don't really like seeing that. No, but no. I think he's I... done it. From what you've said, he's, he, uh, from what you've said, again, I haven't listened to interview, but from what you've said, he's talked about it from the perspective of the team. He hasn't singled anybody no. out. He's saying no. from the single of the team, yeah. we've not done what I want and what I've set out or what I've asked them to do and what, and what the expectations are. So, you know, yeah. I mean... I mean, that's what he did yeah, say. He did so. say, yeah, that's what he did say. Because when he got asked questions, he went, "Look, I'm not being overcritical." He says, "Look, we've won. You know, we have won." He says, "But end of day, I've still got to see it as I, as, as I'm watching it." He says, "As as quality and as standards can be better, and it should be mm. better." So it's it won't like you've said. Oh, but I said we've lost like two one, and it's come out said it, and it's like it, it that's like, but we is winning, and yeah. He appreciates what we've won, and he did say, "Look, I probably have a glass of red, and it might be a bit more in perspective." He said, "But now, he said, there's certain things there that I know we could have done and should have done better, mm. and we have won." He said, "So it's not a lambast them and oh, we've done this out of work X, Y, Z. It's like, yeah, like you said, yeah, named individual people, which is yeah. great. I think that yeah. should be in the dressing room, but he's come out in general and said, look, did it, did it, and then he got mentioned about fans. You know, I think it was just under two thousand, like." knocking up like 1900 summit mm -hmm. and he said well fans 10 out of 10 or was three out of 10 he went because fans were passionate this or versus and i'm thinking fair play because he's recognized that as well he hadn't just like focusly sold it on the on the team and said oh we should have but i appreciate for the backing of the fans and i'm thinking fair play to you because you call it as you are and and i think if, if you've got a manager like that not publicly naming a shaming place which I, I don't think we should do but, no. yeah, he's unhappy about the surf performance, right? We as fans will be able to see that. Yeah. Gaffer's yeah. got his own thing and his backroom staff. So I can guarantee, I know we've got like that Bristol Street Motor, bloody arsey party, bloody cup no, game no. against Man yeah. under 21s. So you can guarantee that he's going to have his players in to be addressing it for the Northampton game because he'll be wanting to get a fist on win under Bell in, you know, in league. And he'll be wanting to implement a certain way again. So I'm thinking players should be going away from this and thinking, right, Gaffer said this. I probably know as a player that I should have done X, Y, Z. Let's mm. go out and work and, and see that. And I think yeah. that's what us as fans can kind of relate to. I'm thinking, yeah, do you know what? But he's seen it from his side. He's seen it from our side. And it's like, if we work hand in hand at the end of the day, don't we? Because we can see yeah. the chance it as well. So. I think as well, Neil. You've got to look at it from the, you've got to look at it from his perspective. He's tasked to get us at least in the playoffs, right? Mm -hmm. And build a team, build a team, and build um, a certain way of playing that's <laughs> going to get us into the playoffs, right? If he don't get us into the playoffs, he's probably going to get sacked. So it's his job online as well to get us into the playoffs. Last season. I would argue, despite us just making the playoffs, it was more easy, easy or easier to do it last season than what it is going to be this mm. season. Mm. I mean, you've got, you've got to bear in mind. I was thinking thinking this when 
when you were telling me about this interview, and I'm thinking, well, I don't know what to make of it. If we'd gone out and played like the way we did yesterday against a team like Uddersfield away, Birmingham City away, Rotherham away, that that could have been a very different result. Mm. Very different. Because, so, you have to set a standard. There has to be a standard this year. They, they mm. are going to have to. They can't just turn up for 60 minutes in a game, uh, well, turn up for 40 minutes, sorry, and get a result like they did last season. We've done that. We did that so many times last season against, well, I don't think... uh, Against Bolton. Bolton. Yeah, Bolton. The game against... uh, Peter Peter Leighton Orient at home. It were... We turned up for 60 minutes or 40, 50 minutes and managed to get a result. Fair play. Um, but you, you can't you, you can't do that this season because you're getting some really good teams. So if it's him trying to set our standard for how we're going to play and, and lay Gauntland down to some lads in the dressing room, then it's going to have to be done. Yeah, going to have to be done. And again, you've asked, I think that's what you're, you're, you're paying, investing in a, in a gaffer to do. Not just tick a box and go with floor, but to, like you say, he's got his standards, he's got his reputation. He wants to implement it and fair play to him. I think us as fans will back him. Um, and I think players will buy into what he wants to do because end of the day, if he's got standards and he wants to play, it's only going to play and improve as well. And yeah, I think, and I think players will improve their standards. And I think as well, he would have probably been happy in league... I were happy with where we played in League Cup on Tuesday. Mm. Really mm. happy with where we performed. We didn't mm. manage to get result in normal time because we ended up conceding a stupid penalty. But I think he would have come away from that feeling happy and expecting yeah. more coming into coming into more of that coming into this game, but being a bit more maybe being a bit more solid at back. I think he got the solid at the back bit fairly. We yeah. more expressive um, up with over third, yeah. Yeah, but it were up a it were it were midfield and, and strike force that didn't mm. really well Cosgrove got goal, I suppose, but you know, they, oh. it, you know on, on the all his overall performance they didn't do that well to be to be honest, but mm. fair play to him. Fair play. He's got to he's got to he's got to come out and say something, hasn't he? And I'd rather yeah. be honest than be than be <laughs> having, you know, smoke blown up the uh, proverbial yeah, I mean, fair play to come out and said it. Uh, move on to Northampton game coming up on Saturday. See what happens with players and that, right? You know, there's always rumours on social, so until it's done, it's done. But Dan, as always, been a pleasure uh, chatting to you, mate. Uh, let us know in your comments when you're watching back at, you know, uh, what we are thought on game. Um, did we deserve a win? Could it be a lot more easier? Bearing in mind not taking out away from Lincoln, it could have been a lot worse. If they got that penalty, it could have been a draw. So, again, you know, Daniel Clark coming out with comments. You know, and uh, rightly so, I think, you know, not naming and shaming, but obviously standards. And I think that's what we need as a club at the minute. Uh, standards, set standards and let it uh, roll on it rather than just like roll over and never belly tickled in some cases, in some games like last season. So, yeah, Dan, as always, mate, it's been a pleasure chatting to you. Uh, please like, subscribe and share. I know you always do. It's, it's much appreciated. Let you know your thoughts and comments. But again, uh, fist away win at season in the league. Let's see if we can get his first away win of a season at home in the league against Northampton Town next Saturday. Uh, one thing left to say, you Reds.